Don't be surprised by problems. Many people think life will be problem free after they become Christians. They feel surprised or even betrayed by God if they go through hard times. If you experience hardship, persecution, or illness, you may think that you are not close to God or that God is angry with you. You may assume that if God is with you, he will always protect you from going through difficulties. In this Bible study, you will read how to respond to difficult problems that are part of every believer's life. This is our discussion question. What are your expectations? Do you think God will protect you from going through difficulties? Why or why not? People in the Old Testament went through hard times. In the Old Testament, we read about many people who were blessed and delivered by God. However, we also read about people who faced hardship of many kinds. Many of these Old Testament stories are briefly summarized in Hebrews, a book in the New Testament In its pages, we read about people who experience God's blessings and deliverance from dangers. In Hebrews 11, 32 through 35. So let's go to Hebrews 11, 32 through 35. Let me find it. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11 is the faith chapter. I like to call it my faith chapter. It's, it's all about faith. All about faith. I thought Hebrews was right in here somewhere. It might be the book. Okay. I was close. I was close. Here it is. Hebrews 11, 32 through 35. Okay, let me get my pages turned. And what shall I more say for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak of Samson and of Jabez of David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to fight, turned to fight the armies of the aliens, women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they may, might obtain a better resurrection. Amen? But we also read about people who were tortured, ridiculed, flogged, chained, imprisoned, stoned, sawed in two, killed by the sword, made destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. Some wandered in deserts and mountains and lived in ca caves and holes and Ground, Hebrews 11, 35 through 38. Well, we read 35, women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured. Not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better re resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourges, and moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword that wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. People in the New Testament went through hard times. Jesus, I, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full, John 10, 10. He offered us his love in John 15, verse 9. Joy in verse John 15, verse 11, and peace 
John 14, verse 20. Although Jesus came to bless us, he did not guarantee a trouble-free life. Let's look at a few examples of hardships experienced by people in the New Testament, starting with Jesus himself. Jesus experienced many extremely hard times. Although Jesus was and is the Son of God, he faced many hardships and trials when he was on the earth. For example, Matthew 8 verse 20 tells us that he didn't have a home. He did not own a home. So let's go to Matthew 8 verse 20. Amen. Matthew 8 verse 20. Okay. And Jesus said unto him, The foxes have hoes, and the birds have air have and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. His friends deserted him in Matthew twenty six. Let's go to Matthew twenty six. Matthew twenty six. Verses fourteen through sixteen. It's just the beginning. Fourteen. Well, I'll get to it. I'll tell you when you have a new Bible, I have to get used to the pages. Then one of the twelve called Judas the Scarlet went unto the chief priest and said unto the him, What will ye give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenant with him for thirty pieces of silver. And from that time he sought opportunity to betray him. Also in 69 through 75. This is talking about Judas betraying Jesus. It's his friends, one of Jesus' friends, one of his disciples, one of his followers. 69. Now Peter sat without in the palace, and the damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. Here's another one, Peter. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him, they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, for thy speech be Bravely, then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man, and immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. Most people loved him for what they could get, not for himself. As in Matthew 14, verse 13. Amen. Matthew 14, verse 13. We're still talking about Jesus now. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. And in Luke 6, 17 through 19. Luke 6. Luke 6. 
17 through 19. Praise God. This may take two, two lessons. Six. There's a lot of scripture read. And he came down with him and stood in the plain, in the company of his disciples, and a great multitude. I went a little bit too far. And a great multitude. I guess that is. Yeah, I did. Well, why won't it? There it is. And a great multitude of people out of all of Judah and Jerusalem from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Amen. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for they went virtue. There went virtue out of him and healed them all. He was falsely accused in Matthew 12, verse 22 and 24. Matthew 12. I'm still talking about Jesus, I'm telling you. Matthew 12. Verse 22 and 24. Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil. Possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him. And so much as the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out devils, but by Belzeba, the prince of the devils. And in Mark 14, Mark 14, I'm telling you, deaf and dumb spirit is of the devil. I don't care what anybody says. 57. And there rose certain and bare false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and within three days I will build another made with our hands. But neither so did their witness agree together. He was tortured. And Matthew 27. And actually, that was prophesied in Isaiah. Matthew 27. Matthew 27. Matthew 27. 27 to 31. Oh boy. Matthew 27. Okay, 27 to 30. 27 to 30. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus unto, into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put him on, put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head, and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the, bowed, bowed the knee before him, and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him, and took the reed and spot him on their head. And after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off him from him, and put his own raiment on him. And let him away to crucify him. He was crucified in Matthew 27, 32 through 50. And as they came out, they found a man of Saron, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. 
And when they were coming to a place called Golgoth, that is to say a place of school, they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with God. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my bastard did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there, and set upon up over his head his accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of Jews. Then, there, then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And they that passed by reveled, reveled him, wagging their heads, and saying, Thou hast to destroy the temple and build it in three days. Save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise, also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross. We will believe him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now. If he will have him, for he said, I am the Son of God. The thieves also, which were crucified with him, cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama Shabbat, this is to say, my God, my God, why, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, This man called for Elias. And straightway, one of them ran and took a spurt, and filled it with vinegar, put it on a reed, and gave him to drink. The rest said, Let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save, save, save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, he had up the ghost. Amen. He bore our sins upon himself. Luke 24. That's in Luke 24. Verse 45 through 47. Then opened he their understanding that they might underst understand the scriptures and said unto them this is Luke yeah okay I'm right thus it is written and thus it it beloved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem Paul had many severe problems. Paul, a man who wrote much of the New Testament, also experienced much suffering. These passages describe some of his hardships. To this very hour we go hungry and thirsty. We are in rags. We are brutally treated. We are homeless. We work hard with our own hands. When we are cursed, we bless. When we are persecuted, we endure it. When we are slandered, we answer kindly. Up to this moment, we have become the scum of the earth, the refuse of the world. 1 Corinthians 4, 11 to 13. I have been in prison more frequently. Amen. been flawed more severely, been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the forty lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. shipwrecked. I spent a night and day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my own countrymen, in danger from the Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, in danger from false brothers. I have labored and tailored and told, and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have 
often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Second Corinthians 11, verse 23 through 28. Our discussion question. Reread the above passages. Did Paul ever go through a hard time? Yes, he did. What can you learn from his example? Many of Jesus' other followers have severe problems. Many more people in the New Testament experience suffering, for example. Religious leaders flock to the disciples. We can read that in Acts 5, verse 40 through 46. So let's go to Acts 5. Acts 5. Praise the Lord. Acts. Acts 5. Now see, these are his followers. Now we're going to talk about Acts 5, 40 through 42. If I can get to the front. Chapter that is. Okay, Acts 5. Well, it's a long chapter. I have to go a little bit further. Okay. All right, 40 to 42. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus, and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Stephen was stoned to death in Acts 7. Verse 57 through 60. Stephen was stoned to death. Think about being stoned. You think you can go through that? You think you can get stoned to death? Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet whose name was Saul. They stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Most of the Christians in Jerusalem were driven from their homes and out of their cities. And Acts 8, verse 1, And so I was consenting unto his death, and at that time there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the re regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. James was killed by the sword. Acts 12, verse 2. And we got, we think we're, we're got, we got trouble. We have nothing compared to what they went through yet and there may be some that being persecuted I can't say and he killed James the brother of John with his sword Paul and Silas were unfairly accused beaten, jailed and put in stocks Acts 16 Acts 16 next time you complain better think about what other people may be going through Amen. Acts 16, 19 through 24. Acts 16, 19 through 24. I cannot complain. Yeah, I, you know, I thought I suffered when I had to walk to work and do this and do that. And, uh, 
But after reading what I've read in the Bible, what people had had to endure, people getting shot, people getting killed for no reason. That's a hardship right there. I mean, thank God that I'm still alive. Thank God I am maybe not physically, mentally where I should be. I'm not where I used to be. All for the grace of God. Acts 16, 19 through 24. I still got to go back one page. Yeah, I, I, I've had thoughts of suicide, thoughts of, I've had depression, anxiety problems. I've suffered physical and mental problems, but God's grace brought me through everything. Okay, 19 through 24. And when the, her masters saw that the hope of their grain, gangs were gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive neither to observe being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates ran off their clothes and com commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stock. The Thessalonians church went through since severe suffering in First Thessalonians. Amen? That's in First Thessalonians. Now we're getting way deep in the Bible now. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> huh. Verse says one, verse six, and ye become became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in so and much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. And second Thessalonians one. And five, so that we ourselves glory in the you and the churches of God for your patience and faith, and all your persecution and tribul tribulations that ye endure, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer. Amen. Our discussion question: Did these people suffer because they did something wrong? No. Explain your answer. Because they were following Jesus. You will go through difficult times. Although God often protects us from harm and delivers us when we are in danger, He does not promise us a trouble-free life. In fact, we can expect problems, disappointments, and mistreatment. Read what Jesus told His followers. I have told you these things. So that in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16, verse 33. I love the way Jesus said, we can take heart and know his peace, even though we have trouble in this world. You will read more about this wonderful promise in part two of this Bible study. But let's, first let's look at a few more passages that tells us believers will go through difficult times. 
brother will betray brother to death, and the father his children, his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. And that's happening right now. All men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. I tell you the truth. You will not finish going through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A student is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the student to be like his teacher and the servant his master. If the head of the house has been called Bathsheba, how much more the members of his household? Matthew 10, 21 through 25. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for him. Philippians 1, verse 29. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. Acts 14, verse 22. Discussion question. If you are fired or get sick, have family struggles, or go through other types of hard times. Does that mean God doesn't love you? Explain your answer. Be prepared for your problems. Since God has warned that you will go through hard times, don't be surprised when you go through them. If you think Christians should not experience serious problems, you are setting yourself up for disappointment, disappointment depression, and anger as you go through life. People may disappoint you. Your finances may get worse. You may lose your house. Your health may suffer. People may love, people you love may go through hard times. You might be fired or have trouble finding a good job. A close friend or spouse may reject you. You may be persecuted for your faith. Don't live with the deep, constant fear that things won't work out. There's no need to go through life constantly fearing that you are about to suffer at any moment. But it's wise to realize that disappointment and problems will come your way. If you expect them, you are better prepared to respond in a godly manner. How can knowing that disappointment and hardships are part of life to help you avoid becoming discouraged or depressed. How would you like to respond when you go through hard times? Here's a memory verse. I have told you these things so that in me you have, may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. John 16, verse 33. That's our memory verse. Make it personal. Can Christians, Christians expect to go through difficult times? Why or why not? What were some of the problems Jesus experienced? What were some of the problems Paul experienced? Compare your problems to Paul's. Are your problems worse than Paul's? Explain your answer. If someone disappoints you, does that mean he or she is not a Christian? Why or why not? Why is it a good idea to expect that sometimes you will go through hard times? If you go through a hard time, does that mean God is angry with you? Why or why not? What are some problems you are facing right now? Pray asking God to help you deal with these problems. Amen? Praise the Lord. Our introduction, we will, we will, uh, next time we will go with part two of the two-part series on growing through problems. If you go through difficult times, you may get, you may get mad at God or at those who caused your problems. Or you may feel sorry for yourself, become depressed, get angry with yourself, become fearful, or wonder if God loves you. They, these are 
These are all normal emotions, but don't stop there. Ask God to help you draw close to Him and to put your trust in Him. Psalm 13 gives us a pattern to follow, a pattern we could follow. In this short psalm, David describes the agony he is experiencing. Ask for God's help, proclaims his trust in God's love, and, and praises God. For the director of music, a psalm of David. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long will I, must I wrestle with my thoughts and every day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. My enemy will say, I have overcome him, and my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for he has been good to me. Psalms 13. Sometimes it's difficult to follow David's example. For example, if a family member dies, or you go through a personal crisis, you may experience deep sorrow or grief. If that happens, don't feel guilty. God understands. After all, godly people in the Bible also experience grief. You can read Acts 20, verse 37 through 38. Let's go to Acts 20. Acts 20. Oh, Acts twenty. I can walk up to Acts twenty. I'm almost there. If I get caught off, I will finish up in the next part. Cause I'm in the second part of the study. Acts 20, 37 through 38. And they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him. Sorrow and most of all for the words which he spake, that they should see his face no more. And they accompanied him unto the ship. And 21, verse 13. Then Paul answered, what mean ye to weep and to break mine heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. That's two examples. Although it may take time to recover from grief, God will help you as you turn to him. Remember the Bible's promises. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present Helping troubles, Psalms 46, 1. Discussion questions. When you go through hard times, how do you usually respond? How would you like to respond? Amen? You remember our memory verse? You remember our memory verse? Okay, maybe I need to tell it to you again. Maybe I need to tell it to you again. But I will tell it to you again. Yes, I will. I will tell it to you again. Let me uh, save this to the my messenger so I won't forget where I left off. So we're about to run out of time on this first study on my podcast. I'm... I'm Bob on my podcast, Spreaker Podcast. Um, from Badoster, Georgia. Okay. Okay.
Yeah, I got it. Well, that's the choice. So let's go back to our I believe it was John 16. Peace, I live. No, that's a good one. Maybe it's got a different one. But the, the first one, the first memory verse. Let's go to the first memory verse. Let's remember, let's remember the first memory verse. And I will try to remember to write it down later. Okay. John 16, verse 33. I have told you these things. That in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. John 16, Verse 33. Wish I had a highlighter so I could highlight that. John 16, verse 33. It's our memory verse. Remember that. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. May God bless you, and I will be back probably tomorrow for the conclusion of this Bible study. Well, no, there's more than one part. There's more than two parts. I will continue in this Bible study about expect problems in your life. You know, have a blessed day. This is December 19th. 2019. Walk by Faith Ministry. Deborah Carr was speaking about Austin, Georgia. And today I celebrate my 36th year anniversary with my husband, Larry Bruce Cargill Sr. We have two beautiful children and five wonderful grandchildren. God bless.